Okay, hello everyone, this is Ben from Agfa. So we're skipping ahead a bit, because um, I still haven't done a video about how to model this. I've done the grey box, but what we're going to look at now, today, is just uh, UVs and how you can get a UV out of um, Maya and into a program like Critter. So you can have a UV like this one here that we can use uh, in order to then be able to um, apply it as a texture in here. So, so far we've looked at how to apply just normal um, textures and everything, um, but now we're looking at how do we take you know, this UV here and get it out and then put those textures over the top of it and then put them in here. So when we're going through the subway scene, we looked at a few different um, like ways of UV unwrapping. I haven't used anything differently here than I would have used in on there. Um, it just takes time just to get everything out. But what I have done and what I want you to try and do when you're doing your UV unwrap is arrange it into different quadrants of where you're going to keep your textures. So for example, uh, this quadrant here is all about this wood texture. So any parts of the UV map that I want to have a wood texture on, that's where they're going to live. They're going to be in here. Um, this part here is all about the lock um, mechanism, which as you can see is a little bit different type of brass um, than the rest of it. And then this type of brass here for the outer brackets and everything, all the shapes are arranged in this quadrant here. Um, and then the rust um, for like say this, just to break it up even more with the hinges, um, that's all over here as well. And so what that means is that if I look at something and I go, yeah, you know what, I actually kind of I uh, want to see what it would look like if I just had, um, say, this bracket here uh, with this material on here. I can just change it, move it over here, and then see how that looks and decide whether that's the look I'm going to go for or whether that's too samey and then bring it back again. And so it just makes it a little bit easier if I want to make changes, uh, especially if I look here at this one um, and I'm noticing, you know what, this doesn't really have the... Uh, look that I wanted everything, I can then change it around and rotate it so I can have the wood grain all going across like that. So it's just makes it a lot easier and flexible to do that kind of a setup. So yeah, basically we're going to look at first how to get this UV map once you have UV unwrapped it out and then look at how we can create this sort of a texture inside of Critter. So again, um, skipping ahead here because I'll go back and later and show a video on how to model this and how to UV unwrap this. But again, if you are getting lost with your model, that'll be particular to your own model. Whereas this process that I'm about to teach you will be quite similar across the board. So first of all, we highlight our whole object here and we go to our UV editor. So just to bring that over here, because I just realized the whole recording on the other screen. Um, so yeah, this is the um, map that I was talking about there before. And so when I was saying about rearranging your different squares and everything, that's what I'm talking about here. Here's your wood quadrant, here's your bracket quadrant, uh, here's the shinier metal quadrant, and here's the rust quadrant there, okay? So how do we get this out so that we know where to apply all these different materials? Well, we select everything, and then we go up here to image, and then we go to UV snapshot. Now by default, it should be going into your own project folder, but if it doesn't, um, you just click here on browse, and I'm gonna put it here. It normally defaults to putting it into the images folder. Um, I tend to put it into the source images folder, just simply because that's where all my textures are gonna be anyway, so it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna call this chest UV. I'm gonna save. I've got to make sure this is a PNG. Okay, that's very important because if you put it as a Maya if file, not many image programs will read that. And a PNG comes with transparency, which makes it easier to work with then as well. So I'm going to leave it at the standard 1024. Um, you can pump it up to say like, you know, 2000 um, everything. But yeah, you don't want to go too high because a lot of the textures that you're going to be getting off of textures.com are at 1024. So it's worth just sort of keeping it at that ratio. So I'm going to go apply. And it's going to save down here, so it's not going to show anything, um, unfortunately, but it has gone to that sort of file there. So then if I go into my uh, folder, so I've got mine synced to my Google. So that's going to be in my, my projects, Zelda chest, source images. So now I've got this PNG. So when I open that up, that's what I should see. 
Um, so now we're going to open it up in Critter and start putting those textures on there. So I'm going to go File. In fact, I'm just going to, if I've already got that open, I can right click and drag this in. I'm going to insert as open a new document. And then I should end up with something like this. So we've gone through a bit of Critter before, um, but I just want to reiterate just for people who might be a little bit confused by this sort of step here. So this grid that we're seeing in the background is because this is a PNG. That means it's transparent. That means if I apply this inside of Maya, it should be transparent um, and I can put things behind it. Um, so it's a quite a useful sort of, uh, sort of image format. Um, but we want to make sure it's protected so that we don't accidentally start drawing over the top of our map. So I'm going to click here on this little padlock and that means that I can't draw over it anymore, which is quite useful. I'm then going to go down here to add a new um, image file and we're just going to call this one back. Because this is a bit hard to see, I'm going to go to my paint bucket tool over here, turn this into black there, hide this background layer and then just put it there. And I'm going to rename my background layer by double clicking on it and call it UV. Okay, so now we have our map there, which I can't draw on, which is good. We have a back to make it a little bit easier to see. So I'm just gonna put in my first sort of texture here. I'm just gonna call this one color. Cool, um, so first one I'm gonna look at is just how we can actually make it so that color appears on these uh, sort of quadrants and everything. And then I'll show you how you can apply that inside of Maya. I'll bring this video to a close. And then we'll start looking at how we can get textures from textures.com on there as well. And we'll use the pattern paint tool. But I just want to go through this just to demonstrate exactly how um, we use these different maps. So again, like I said, uh, we've got this sort of quadrant here dedicated to um, that sort of rougher metal sort of look there. So again, I'm going to go to that there. I'm going to hide this layer. Critter has a thing, unfortunately, where it sort of... Um, if you have that layer visible, it will try and work around it sometimes. So you've just got to be careful. So sometimes I'll hide that just so it doesn't happen. So we've got that color there. I'm then going to go to this color down here. And we're going to paint that paint bucket tool. I'm going to make that more of a brown color because that's that more wood sort of color. Like so. Then going to go to this quadrant up here. So this is more of our rusted sort of metal and everything. So our um, bracket handles and hinges. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go with more of a grey sort of colour like that. And then down here for this last one, I'm just going to. So this selection tool I'm using. If you get weird shapes like this where they just cut over like that, um, then what you can do is hold down the shift key and then just sort of break it up like that. And that just makes it a bit easier to work with. So with that in there, I'm just going to go paint bucket. And with this one, this is more of the sort of brighter sort of gold. So I'm just going to do that sort of brighter, lighter sort of color there like that. Cool. And then I'm going to hide this because I don't want these lines to appear on my texture. So I'm just going to hide them. And I'm just going to export this map out here. And we're just going to go save as going to go, yep, PNG. Uh, first thing I'm going to do actually is save it as a critter doc so I can come back and edit these layers as I see fit. Um, but then I'm going to save it as again and export it out as a PNG. And just going to call this one chest flat color. There we go. I'm going to go back to my object here and go um, material attributes. You can see there's already one chest mat here, so I'm gonna go assign a new material, Fong E, and we're gonna call this one chest mat two. Go here to color, open, and flat color. As we can see, it's all mapped out nicely. Um, so I'm now going to go down here, assign existing material, mat 2, assign existing material, mat 2. I'm just going to do it for all of them. And there we go. And so it you know, looks nice, it's got a nice sort of charm to it and everything. Um, but I just wanted to show you that's how it sort of should be. And then when we go here to UV Editor, we should see that same sort of thing here. And with the advantage that I was talking about before, that if we're starting to look at this and thinking, yeah, you know what? 
I actually kind of don't like this sort of lighter yellow color here and everything. Then we can just start looking at, well, how would that look if we had that texture on it? Does that look better or worse, you know? So that's just what I wanted to demonstrate in this video for now is just how to get this image out, get it into Krita, apply different materials into those four quadrants and then apply them back in here on the same source material. Uh, in a minute, after I've just gone around and checked on everyone, uh, we're gonna look at how we can get textures um, similar to what you saw in that previous material. So, um, you know, this one here and how we can get those different materials there. And also looking at how we can get normal maps and roughness maps to all line up with themselves as well. Okay, cool. So hang tight and we will see you again in just a minute.